What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I have a special guest with me here today, Miss Noelle Arevalo. Um, we are going to be doing, this is actually a series that Noelle is going to be doing on her channel. And it is Couch Conversations. Uh, today the specific topic that we're going to be touching on um, is all things relationships, all things dating, all things how to handle being single, being independent. Um, we got lots of really good questions from you guys. Um, we did a QA and a box on, Insta on both of our Instagrams. And so we're gonna address half of those questions on my channel and half of them on Noelle's channel. If you aren't already subscribed to her channel, it is going to be the first link in my description box. So make sure you head over there. She gives just such incredible content, such incredible value. Um, She's just amazing. <laughs> I love her so much. I'm gonna be so sad when she leaves me. Um, but yeah, we're super excited to address this topic. It's something that I get asked so frequently, um, how to deal with heartbreak, those types of things. I don't know if I like put off the message that like I've gone through relationships and heartbreaks because I really like haven't had many relationships. Yeah. Um, and I tend to keep that area of my life pretty private. However, it is something that I get asked a lot by many women in my DMs. You know, they say they're struggling um, with getting over a breakup, dealing with heartbreak, how to be single, how to navigate like the dating scene, mm -hmm. which can be really, really hard and challenging. So um, it's something we are super excited to kind of just share our experience and answer your guys' questions today. So again, make sure we're gonna answer six questions on my channel and then six on Noelle's. Um, so after you check out the video here, go watch the rest of it on Noelle's channel. Right, so this first question is, um, what is your true definition of an independent woman? How do you become an independent woman? I think the true definition is it's it's different for every single person. It's whatever you identify with as being independent, feeling independent. Personally, for me, um, it means that I don't re need to I don't need to receive my validation from any external force, whether that be another person or thing. Um, it also means that I'm able to support myself, not just financially. I'm talking about mentally, emotionally. The most um, important. Yeah, the most absolutely. Important way to support yourself for sure, and just the simple fact of just feeling whole and complete by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that has definitely taken time and has, you know, I've had to cultivate that over time. And I think one of the biggest pieces that has contributed to that sort of development of feeling independent is allowing myself to be single mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. not really not jumping into relationships just to say so, that I have something or because I feel lonely um, and really just getting comfortable with my own company and recognizing that like I'm the best date I have, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. For sure. um, you know, and I think a lot of it has to do with upbringing too. You know, my family definitely raised me to like be super independent. Um, but yeah, I think that that's one of the biggest things is is just allowing yourself that time to just be alone, um, get comfortable with your own company, and just learn to just be super happy with just yourself. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, <laughs> you're answering all these questions amazingly. I 100% agree with Karen and kind of making it a little bit different. I came from a background where um, I, it was a hard upbringing and so um, it took a lot of time for me to be, learn how to be like an independent woman because I had an upbringing where it was chaotic and all over the place and so I didn't really understand self-value and I didn't really understand self-worth and self-love and how you should be treated and the way that you deserve to be treated and stuff like that or mm -hmm. uh, being just content within yourself. I always searched for things externally to fulfill a void because of what I came from and um, and really it, it just is uh, working on yourself, being like she was saying, being content, being alone, and you will know when you feel that way. Because I always seen, you know, my mom and she was like very codependent. So it was a learned behavior for me. So I, I saw that and I was, and I knew I was that way. And I was like, I do not want to be that way. So again, just like diving head first into a lot of self-development things, books, um, Tony Robbins was like a big, a big person for me to help me understand how to be content being alone. Um, a lot of his material is really, really good if you're like looking for ways to help yourself sure. and, and actually really applying it, right? Because it's, we've both come a long way, um, and both different backgrounds. So yeah, you, that's great. You, you really did like answer that question very well. You added to it beautifully. 
<laughs> um, this next one, what do you do when guys just want to hook up and nothing else? Um, I mean, if that's not what you're looking for, you get to make it very clear that that's not what you want. So like, I don't really feel like that's, we need to go deep into that. I just think communication from the jump is so, so, so important. Um, I've been single for quite a while, quite a while now, and I've gone on like a few dates here and there. It's just not something I'm like super interested in doing unless I really feel like this person's going to like add value to my life. And I am the most honest person. Like I will communicate from the very beginning that like casual sex, it ain't my thing. I don't do it. I'm not interested in it. Um, and I just make that very clear. And if that's all they want, they'll fall off. And then mm -hmm. you save yourself the, the trouble. So yeah. I think communication and just being clear on what your, I guess, expectations are and what you're interested in. Um, it's not even to say that like, I want to marry you tomorrow. Like that's not, I think it's, I, I think it's fair to tell somebody that you aren't interested in hooking up. You aren't interested in casual sex. Yeah. It, it all stems back to intentions and mm -hmm communicating and being 100% honest. Because for another person, maybe that's what they want. They know that right. they don't really want anything serious. Yeah. Um, and as long as there's respect on both ends and you communicate like what your intentions are, um, then then yeah. But if, it's, if, if you're looking for something serious um, and then this person just wants to hook up with you, that's not somebody to like, what is it metaphorically figuratively whatever actually jump into bed with because right, then you're yeah. setting yourself up mm -hmm. um to to be to get hurt you yeah. know if those aren't your intentions you want something serious and you're like oh my god i really like this guy but all he wants to do is hook up okay maybe if i hook up with him yeah. then he'll Ooh. change his mind oh no. like don't put yourself in that situation yeah. if you could avoid it if your intentions are very different from whatever he communicated with you yeah so i think just communi like communicating your needs not telling this person that you're dating what your needs are and expecting them to know is literally like going to a restaurant and expecting the waitress or waiter to know your order without ordering you know yeah. it's like we're not mind readers no so just be so. clear on what your intentions are from from the very beginning <laughs> when you're on a dinner date do you expect the guy to pay thoughts um, okay this is a go good ahead one. i've been taking the lead on the last couple of questions so why, why this is this a it? good one this is a good one because i feel like this is a very controversial <laughs> yeah i agree I agree. Okay, so. Well, I think on the count of three, we should both just say what our immediate answer is. Okay, ready? Okay, one, one two, two, three, three. no. Pay. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, I'm coming to that shoot and our battery's <gasps> dying, so we gotta hurry. Okay, so, I just feel that I am always the kind of person where whenever I've gone on a date, every time I will, I will, I will whoop out my card. Yes. I don't go for free meals. I don't go because I expect them to pay. But I think a true gentleman um, is is gonna is gonna pay the bill. Like I just I, I am somebody who I can 100% take care of myself. I could, I could pay for his yeah. and mine's date and multiple dates. But <laughs> right. it says a lot yeah. about a man who takes initiative to yes. pay for you. Okay, I fully agree with that 1,000%. <laughs> Um, I'm just necessarily saying that I don't go into it with the expectation and I won't like rule this guy out if he doesn't offer. Um, yeah, that's all I'm really saying. Um, but it does definitely, I mean, you're going to get more points in my book if yeah. you, if you do offer, but I, I guess I just don't like expect it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't expect it. Yeah. Granted, I have gone on dates where guys don't pay and did you ever go off? I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I actually don't know if I've ever been I on a date with a guy that didn't pay. See, it's just like chivalry. Like, yeah. But it does, like, that's yeah. not really a thing anymore. So I just, I, I don't expect it, but I think that they should. Yeah. And I said, I think it says volumes about somebody who does to somebody who does. And then you can pay on the next date, you yeah. know? Like, I'm fully about, like, just, you know, a little give and take here. But I do agree with that. Like, I think that that initiative is a turn on for sure yeah yeah <laughs> no yes um is it healthy to maintain a relationship with an ex if you're not over them no, no. Hard <laughs> like no. hard no hard no um the whole like let's be friends thing if if your intention is to move on from this person um then absolutely not you know i i will say that i have one ex that I would consider a friend now um, and it took six years for us to get there like we didn't speak for years because uh, we both had to go through that healing process mm -hmm. and get over each other and now it's not even like we talk all the time or anything like that but it's to the point where like 
we can see each other with other people and like be happy for each other and you know chat every once in a while here and there but it took a long time to get there so i think trying to maintain a friendship with an ex when you're still in your healing process of the breakup is an absolute hard now yeah yeah 100 percent. again goes back to intentions and mm -hmm. um knowing yourself and knowing like you know what's gonna help you move forward if that's what you want to do or if it, it, it really can just depend on the situation, but no, yeah. definitely not, no. I really like this next question and I feel like it can cause us both to ramble. So yeah. let's set- Let's just be straight. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, um, what do you value most in a relationship? So I think we can each maybe say like three things. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess my top three things would be communication. Um, I wanna feel like we can have the most honest and vulnerable conversations with one another mm -hmm. authenticity is mm -hmm. i think one of the most underrated turn-ons yeah um if somebody can be so vulnerably themselves it's so attractive to me yeah. um also trust and laughter yeah yeah i, I like to that. laugh i love that i love that <laughs> we appreciate humor yeah um definitely communication mm -hmm. communication is everything and it's something to work on because communication it's not just within relationships guys it's like with every relationship we have right yeah. even friendships yeah. and so communication would be a huge huge thing um respect respecting one another yeah. and um and like trust like slash loyalty because yeah. i feel like that's something that's so hard to come by nowadays with just how accessible I feel social media has mm. made temptation yeah. within relationships and stuff like that nowadays. It's like, what's the next best thing? Right. Um, and so when I when I come across somebody who you just sense like they are a loyal person, um, and it'll say a lot about somebody how they treat others. Yeah. Make sure you pay attention to that, guys or girls. Like how people treat other people is how they're gonna treat you. Yeah. Uh, big big indicators. So those would be the, the three things for me: like respect, yeah. trust. Respect, trust, loyalty, communication. It's good. Yeah. Uh, recently broke up with someone. What do you do to rebuild your self-esteem? Um, I really think that this just goes back to the necessary time that you need to spend alone and cultivate your own sense of happiness within yourself again. I think oftentimes people break up and then they immediately jump into dating or immediately jump into other things as like sort of a band-aid to find that like validation mm -hmm. um, and to kind of like fill your cup with something temporary mm -hmm. um, when you are always going to have yourself. So I think in order to rebuild your self-esteem, you really just need to take that time to connect back to the things that you love, the things that you love to do for you. Um, taking yourself out on dinner dates and just like really just getting happy with your own company again. Mm -hmm. Rebuilding your self-esteem would be, uh, for me, just like things that you can actually do, like actual practical things to like start working towards would be doing things that you love again, mm -hmm. like really doing things that make you happy. Yeah. Um, and then also working on things, it could be anything, like whether that's going to the gym, that's a really good outlet. They literally say breakups make bodybuilders and it's true. <laughs> yeah. We both can like Attack resonate with that. Sure. And yeah. so um, working on things to work on yourself, like yeah. uh, uh, going to the gym, um, I don't know, th really doing things that you like. What's things I think to at the work end of the day, what Noel's trying to say is like set a goal for yourself. Yeah. And then make a commitment to follow through on the action items that you need to to work on that every single day. Mm -hmm. And the more you see yourself showing up for yourself and for your goal, that's the quickest way to build your self esteem and your confidence is, is follow through to your word. So make a goal for yourself, make um, a commitment to yourself, and create action items daily that you need to engage in to get yourself closer to that goal. And I kid you not, your confidence and your self-esteem will improve greatly. Um, and it'll be something that you're focusing on for you. And also just know you guys that like rejection is simply redirection. So mm -hmm. I know sometimes our self-esteem or our egos can be hurt um, from what we perceive as rejection, but yeah. shift your mindset to look at it differently. Instead of looking at it as rejection, look at it simply as redirection to the right things that are supposed to be into your life mm -hmm. and you cannot be open to receive those right things if you're still holding on to the wrong things right, well so. we really hope that you enjoyed this video this was such a fun topic for us to touch on and again like i said we get questions about this all the time again this 
fully was just coming from our personal experience. We're not like relationship experts or yeah. dating experts by any Disclaimer, means. Disclaimer, we're right. not relationship by experts. any any means, right? But we do get questions about this a lot and um, I think Noelle and I have spent a significant amount of time like working on ourselves as individuals. Um, and so if there's any sort of value or help that we can provide you guys um, through our own experiences, you know, that's why we show up and why we do what I do. So um, we hope that you guys enjoyed this. Again, half the questions are here. The other half are on Noel's channel so make sure you go click the first link in my description box go watch the rest of the questions on her channel subscribe to her channel she is amazing um, and if you want us to do more of these couch conversations yeah um, drop some topics below in the comments would love to hear what other topics you guys would love to hear us talk about um, and yeah thanks for being here remember to give this video a thumbs up and we'll catch y'all on Noelle's channel and back on my channel in the next video. <laughs> Bye guys. Love you guys.